Do you like pina coladas? Mucktail version. Hello and welcome to this week's reading vlog where I read a total of this many books. So let's take a look at what I've read. Hey, so today I have a lot of plants. I'm going to start by saying I got the Kobo Libra 2 in and I'll start with the positives. It's upside down. <laughs> Uh, classic. I like that it's white. I think that's cool. Uh, hopefully it doesn't get dirty. The buttons I'm not a fan of. I don't actually like clicking them. Uh, I just don't like the sensation. And this size is actually too big for me. <laughs> I don't need it this big. I like to be able to hold it comfortably and that's not comfortable for me. So I don't love the size but I didn't want to get the Clara because I had so many issues with the other one. So far with this one I haven't had any issues. So that is very good news. Uh, nothing wrong with it at all. So hopefully that stays this way. Um, but yeah, I'll talk about this book in a second. First, I'm going to talk about this book. So this is a middle grade book called Amelia Fang and the Naughty Catacorns by Laura Ellen Anderson. It's a, just a story about Amelia and she's about to become a big sister to a baby brother or sister. And while she's waiting for the news of her new baby sibling, she has to babysit a group of three catacorns who wreak havoc. Um, it's cute but it's just a story we're not really interested in so we're not going to be continuing with this series. It's really cute though that they all have different coloured sprayed edges so I do like that. So I have read another book, Flower Heart. Oh I had so many high expectations for this. This has been everywhere lately because it's the epitome of spring cottage core vibes hands down to the cover. Cover's gorgeous. However, the story. So you have a witch named Clara and her magic is just so wild, so crazy that the council of magic magicians, whatever you want to call them, come to take her powers away because they don't want her to hurt anybody. And at the beginning I'm like, but she hasn't hurt anyone yet. To come and punish someone for a crime that they could possibly commit but they haven't, and it's a bit minority reportish, but then she ends up hurting someone and I'm like, okay, you can take these powers away from this chick because she ain't got a handle on them. So the biggest frustrating issue in this book though, it's sort of meant to be a romance. Dude, no. Horrible, horrible romance. I don't like them together. There's a lot of abuse of power happening in this romance. There is zero chemistry, zero tension. I did not want that to happen whatsoever. This is meant to be YA. It reads like middle grade. It is very young. The magic system and the world is not explained. I don't know how people can continue to do this. I, we need to understand it. I don't understand it. How her magic talks to her in a really horrible hatred filled way, just dripping with venom. So it was horrible listening to her talk to her magic. They were just enemies and it's like well I'm not really rooting for her to like be with her magic personally I'd be like yeah you, you can f off now magic because you've caused me nothing but grief yet you know over the course of a very short period of time when she finally gets tutelage she makes strides it's not believable because she's had tutelage from a great witch and didn't make any progress in being able to control her magic but all of a sudden you're telling me this dude comes along and you guys are just figuring it out <sighs> Not believable. There was a lot of queer rep in this and her mother was the villain. She was vilified, but it, it was just in a very shallow way. Her reasons for being so evil, it's just all shallow surface level stuff. So nothing was really done properly. The execution was subpar. The writing was very basic. The, like I said, character development, it just was laughable. I didn't like Clara at all. I didn't like anyone except maybe her dad, but even her dad was a bit of a doofus, uh, sorry to say. Uh, Clara's mentor though, she was fab, forgotten her name. She was probably one of the only characters I really enjoyed in this book. So I've given it two stars. It just didn't deliver on anything besides cool cover bra. And like I said, on paper, the story had potential, but it just wasn't brought to fruition. So that was so disappointing. I sat in, I nestled under my blanket and I was ready for it. I had my little rose hip tea and I was like, nope, no, this was not it. So my kids and I are about to head off on our trip. Uh, normally I like to take them up to Queensland. Queensland is a state in Australia that is generally warm in winter, 
but they didn't want to do that this year. They asked me instead, can we spend one night in a fancy hotel in the city? So I thought, okay, sure, I can do that. Um, it's not really <laughs> what I want to do, but that's what they asked for. So we're going to head there. I had to have a pool because I want to do some swimming um, inside, obviously, because it's cold. Autumn is very much here. So we are going to be doing that. We're going to be heading to the city for one night at a hotel. They've also asked for room service. So we're going to be having dinner in our rooms. Um, and also the next day they want to try out a buffet. So I was like, okay, sure, we can go for lunch and have a buffet lunch. So um, that's our plans. I'm going to be taking um, some books with me. I'm going to be taking my crochet because I need to crochet a cover for this because like this is going to get banged up for sure. So I'm already started on that and I've got to make some more progress. But yeah, I'm hoping to relax a little bit. We shall see. The next book that I plan to read, I think I'm going to start on my Wild Ones book club pick which is Magnolia Park and that's because it's a big one I, I'm going to force myself to finish it I'm not really a fan I know that there's cheating in this I don't like reading about cheating it's gross to me but everyone has really sung the praises of its writing and a lot of people love the story I just have a feeling I'm not gonna like it it sounds they've likened it to Gossip Girl and that wasn't for me so I don't think I'm gonna like it I think I'm gonna be in the camp of no but that being said, that means I'm going in with the lowest of low expectations. Uh, I've decided to read it on my uh, Kobo because the physical copy hasn't come in with my library. The ebooks come in so much quicker and then the audiobooks and then the physical books. The physical books take yonks to come in, uh, especially for brand new releases. There's like a waiting list, 100 people long. So um, I probably will read it on my Kobo. I'm currently listening to a book called Crushing by Genevieve Novak. It's an Australian author. It's set in Melbourne. I actually really enjoy books set in my hometown. Uh, it adds a little bit extra to it in that it's just really fun. <laughs> you're like, I know that place. And you're really there in the book. And it, they almost feel like autobiographies because it's, it's like, how can this not be a real person? But the um, book is about a woman who's just been a serial monogamous. She's just gone from relationship to long-term relationship. She finds herself single and she's meant to be sort of embarking on this quest to actually get to know herself, not who she is in a relationship, um, which is someone who just molds into whatever the men she dates want her to be. Uh, so far, it's okay. She's met a guy, though, who has a girlfriend and yet somehow they are texting and calling each other every day for hours. So I'm not liking that angle. I'm going to give it a little bit longer because everyone's touting this as a great like story about independence and finding yourself, all of that sort of jazz. But I'm not really getting that at the moment. She's just entered a relationship and now she's having an emotional affair with a dude who's got a girlfriend. So I'm giving it a bit longer, but uh, I, I, I would hate to have to DNF it. But because the writing is easy to read, it's great. This woman feels like someone that you know in your life. She could be anybody, friend, lover, girlfriend, whatever. Um, so I, I've really enjoyed that aspect. It's just this little bit of an emotional affair thing that I'm not really vibing with. But I will update you once we get to our hotel room. I'll give you a bit of a tour. And uh, most of the time, I think hopefully I'll be either crocheting or reading a book. Hello. I love you. Hello, so this is the room. There's a lounge room over here. I think this is a little kitchenette. Once again, hello. Um, this is the view. That way. That way. The rest of the lounge room. Hello again. <laughs> I'll just get my kids out. This is the bathroom, so shower, bath, this is the walk-in closet, this is the view from the bedroom, and this is the bed.
Okay, so we're settled in. The room's lovely. We got a free upgrade, as I mentioned, so that was nice. Very nice touch. I am a DNFing crushing. It is, I'm five hours in, and she's still just embarking on this emotional affair with this other man. And it's not just like an emotional affair. They are dirty talking to each other, saying what they want to do to each other's mouths. And I'm like, mm-mm. No, no, it just makes me feel gross. I don't like it. Uh, it's obviously personal experience. I don't want to be reminded of that happening to me. Um, so I'm just like, cannot do it. I've started Magnolia Parks. Yeah, so far we've just gotten a rundown of their outfits um, and casual mentions of how rich they are. <laughs> Your island is smaller than our island. Oh, not, not liking it. I don't know how people find this entertaining. Like, it's just so vapid and gross and I, just don't want to read about it but it is the book club pick so i'm going to persevere um so we're just at the in the room now and i'm just going to chill for a bit start my crochet continue my crochet i mean and then we're going to um check out the arcade that's in the towers so after that maybe a swim but i'll um film a little bit obviously nothing with my children in it but um yeah it's so far so good And I forgot to update. So the kids and I went to an arcade and we played some games and I won them some stuffed mushrooms and that was the highlight of their day so far, the stuffed mushrooms. Uh, we're just taking a quick break and then we're going to head down to the pool. Okay, so we put our bathers on. Um, it turns out that the pool is only available to adults in the evening so we weren't allowed to go. I didn't know that so we've come back to the room we're just going to get some room service because i cannot be bothered putting on clothes and going to a restaurant um i did learn that too because of the room upgrade we now get a free buffet breakfast so i didn't need to book a buffet lunch for me and the girls but i can't cancel because it's within 24 hours so we're going to be having a buffet breakfast and then a buffet lunch so in between that we'll be swimming <laughs> So it's going to be a very, very busy morning, um, but it's okay. I'm not going to complain about getting a free buffet breakfast. It's just like, probably not going to be eating much of lunch. I'm just going to have to pace myself. But yeah, so far, like I said, the room is really lovely. The service has been fantastic. It's just, yeah, I wish they'd told us about the pool. Like the kids can't go after eight. Would have pool first, then arcade, but it's fine. We'll still swing it, which is going to be very, very busy. Um, the next book I'm going to read, let's go have a look at my Kobo. So we've got, here she is. Um, am I liking it, the Kobo? It's okay, I don't love it. I think I'm going to read one that I hopefully will be a good one um, after that absolutely awful Magnolia Parks. Oh, so I read Magnolia Parks <laughs> and um, I'm giving it, oh, I can't tell you. I can't tell you what I'm giving it because it's for the Wild Ones Book Club. So you have to tune in to that to see my reactions of this book. Okay. So the next book I'm going to read, I think I'm going to read Lonely Castle in the Mirror. So I've heard good things about this. I love the cover. Hopefully it's a good one. Okay, so last night was pretty rough. Um, it was the solar new moon eclipse in Aries, so that could have played a factor. But I found myself still awake at 3 a.m., so I decided just to get up and watch some YouTube. But anyway, so after that, I finally fell asleep. I think it was about 4.30 in the morning, and I had the craziest dream. I'm just going to go down for breakfast now, and then we might play some mini golf. I'm not sure, and one of my my eldest daughter's just not feeling like doing anything so i don't think any of us slept while we were all three peas in a pod in bed last night but um yeah 
that's how I'm starting my day. I'm also listening to, I think, a day or fall a night. And I did not like Priory of the Orange Tree. I thought it was really boring. And so far, I'm two hours into this. I'm feeling the same, my, my dude. So I'm going to give it another two hours. So four hours all up because it's a 39 hour audiobook. If it hasn't gripped me by four hours in, I'm going to have to DNF it. Okay, so I just finished reading Lonely Castle in the Mirror. If I was going to rate this, I would be giving it a two stars, but I'm not going to rate it because my biggest issue with it is the writing. And that's because this is a translated piece of work that was originally in Japanese. And I have yet to find a book that was written in Japanese where the writing actually has warmth, has life. It just feels so cold and dead and like nothing it's so bland and robotic and it's not that it's just translated i have read other translated books and they were great so it just seems to be the japanese books and their translations that just fall flat for me like they feel real flat so the writing not good um is in the translated writing the story itself is about a group of seven teenagers who are all having issues with mental health whether that be depression anxiety or school refusal one day they are able to go through their mirrors and enter a magical castle with a wolf queen who tells them that there is a wish key hidden in there and should they find it they are granted one wish so they have a whole year from the hours of nine to five so basically the main character is not going to school she seems to have anxiety that causes her stomach pain i have children who have anxiety and school refusal and what is termed uh, stomach migraines that after much testing i was told is because of stress stress related i was pretty shocked to see that in the book the parents would just leave their children at home alone and that was how they were dealing with it they'd ask me going to go to school today no okay see ya and they'd go off to work and i'm like is there no therapy in play here are they not being seen by professionals to help them like my eldest daughter um, ended up undergoing a hypnosis and that worked for her. My youngest is in therapy and we're sort of um, implementing techniques to help her manage her anxiety and her fear in going to school. So that really irritated me that the parents are just like, oh, well, I give up. We give up. If you're not going, you're not going. I don't care. Off I go. Didn't love that aspect. Basically, it was so dull, so boring. The kids, for the most part, just go there and play video games for like most of the book. They go to the castle and just play video games with each other. And I didn't feel like any connection to any of the characters. I didn't really feel the bonds growing between them, I think in part due to the writing. There were two twists at the end and I'm like, yeah, okay, but it wasn't enough to save the book. It, it just was such a meh experience, a bit blah. So it was a bit disappointing, but what can you do? So that was that book. I'm finishing off this week's blog here. And uh, I hope that wherever you are, you're having a gold just morning, afternoon or evening and uh, stay wild, Star Child.